we have really a big task in front of us. Let's look at the overall stock search and what it really means for the end users. Well, first, there is the return. We get a little bit higher returns using Obermann stock search. Because unlike in an index, expensive stocks are not overweighted. You know, because you typically have a less uh, accentuated distribution of your stocks in your portfolio. Second, you get choice. You can choose the companies you like, maybe because they're family friendly, maybe because they protect the climate, or maybe because they have a good governance and sound incentives. And third, you have less risk because you own the companies directly. There's nobody in between you and the company itself, other than in an index fund where you have to trust the financial services industry. But what do you have to do for that? What do you have to do to get these benefits? Well, you have to do quite a bit. First of all, and that's the biggest hurdle, you have to understand about intelligent investing. Don't buy the stocks that go up and don't sell the stocks that go down. Put the price you pay for a stock in relation to its fundamental size. The size of the profit, the size of the investment in the company and the size of the revenue the company generates. This is how you can identify value stocks. And value stocks are not stocks that are moving up. Value stocks may be depressed for a long time. Value stocks may also be, not be the stocks you already know. The stocks with cool products, you know, good looking executives. <laughs> and a lot of good news are not really the stocks that are cheap. So understanding about the concept of intelligent investing, buying stocks that are relatively cheap but solid in everything else, is a quick, big, big, big step. Read Benjamin Graham for that, or Warren Buffett for another person. The second thing you have to do is you have to make your own financial decisions regularly. Every three to six months, you have to make a financial decision. You have to look at your portfolio and think what you, what you should buy or sell next. This is work, work that people don't necessarily like to do. And finally, Maybe the worst of all hurdles is you're responsible for your losses yourself. You can't blame anyone, anybody else because nobody else was responsible for that stock picking decision. It was just you. And compared to giving your money to a private banker that you can always blame and feel good about that yourself, um, is gone. So you get a few benefits, returns that are slightly higher because you avoid overvalued stocks, choice because you can really select what you want to hold, and third, lower risk because you hold the stocks directly, have to be balanced against the work that you have to put in, understanding intelligent investing, making regular financial decisions, and finally cope with a loss that you're certainly going to have at certain times. When I look at Obermott, what we think should be the major point now in our communication, I believe it is choice. Why is it choice? Because higher returns are hard to prove. Let somebody else do the math in a couple of years. The risk has to manifest itself. There has to be a case where people lost in an index fund because the counterparties defaulted or whatever other reason. So we only have choice left. We have to market on choice. And then we have the three obstacles, the three hurdles, you know, understanding about intelligent investing, making regular financial decisions and coping with occasional losses. These three are the things that we have to help our customers accept and that we help to lower the hurdle for them to overcome these three barriers.